Hey everyone, I'd like to welcome Morgan Kleber this morning. Morgan is the owner of Wilden United Athletics in Courtney, um, just across from the Lewis Center. And um, so, Morgan, tell me about yourself and, and what you do in the community. Uh, all right, so my name is Morgan, obviously. I own Wild United Athletics. Uh, we've been open for about a year and a half, so uh, it's 2020. We opened in November of 2018. Um, and what we usually offer are group classes and personal training, uh, as well as an open gym scenario so that people can come in and use the space. Um, that's something that we have for our members and for our personal training clients. Um, so it's a little bit different than, uh, like the Lewis center would be where people can just go in and use machines. Uh, we also don't really use a lot of machines. Um, mostly we do free weights, kettlebells. Um, it looks sort of like a CrossFit gym, but we're not a CrossFit gym. And what's your background? What's your training in? Yeah, um, so I'm from Victoria and I played tennis competitively growing up and played college tennis in the States and then came back. Uh, and I was reasonably crippled from that at like every competitive <laughs> as a youth. And uh, I got into personal training while I was in university, just did a BCRPA um, like fitness leader and then personal trainer and uh, I don't know, four or five different modalities under them and started sort of personal training the women who still played tennis in Victoria. And I mean, the community there is quite tight knit, but it was mostly me as an 18 year old playing against 50 year old women. <laughs> uh, and they were my first clients and kind of like my friend's moms and stuff. And um, yeah, and then I lived outside of Canada and I, personal trained overseas and group and taught group fitness as well uh, in Germany and in the Netherlands. And then, and I teach skiing as well at Mount Washington and also in those countries. Um, yeah. And then we came back to Canada and I was doing a little bit more CrossFit at the time. And so I had my CrossFit level two designation as well. And then I got a little bit more into kettlebells. So I also have a kettlebell designation from Agatsu Canada, which is kind of like the Canadian kettlebell body. Okay. Um, and yeah, we came back to the Valley. It was personal training. I was working out at some other local gyms in town. Um, and then eventually you kind of hit a point where you want to have your own space and uh, the right things aligned at the right time. And we we're really lucky that we could open up our gym. Yay. Well, congratulations. That's still, that's still pretty young, still pretty young little, and it, it's a, it's a, it's a really lovely space. I've driven by lots and I've, um, I'm, need to stop in when we can physically stop in. I'm, I find I'm growing this list of, oh yeah, I should do that. Why haven't I done those things? Well, yeah. well it's going to be at its cleanest. Our <laughs> yeah, cleaner. for sure. <laughs> There's been no traffic in there except for our cleaner. <laughs> Almond. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, how do you see our community, our wellness community, our fitness community moving forward and supporting each other um, after this this time? Yeah, so I think obviously everyone is seeing, um, first of all, everyone and their dog is a trainer. <laughs> the market just got really saturated online, so it's quite right. interesting to see this happen. Um, but I think especially with our client base uh, and our gym community. Like we've been running online classes, sort of streaming classes so we can still visit with them and they can still visit with each other. Um, and I think the biggest takeaway so far is that everyone's actually really enjoying those online workouts and they might be a great resource for us even when we do reopen. Um, we also work with Don Elgin who is the owner of Practical Spiritualism and she is a yin, well, she's a yoga teacher but she teaches yin yoga with us. Mm -hmm. um, and doing yin yoga at your house on like a Sunday night before bed is super prime. So <laughs> that's like, everyone's really jazzed about that. And, and also for personal training, it's been working really well. And we're figuring out that, hey, like even if people are out of town where we might have had gaps before or written programs for them to do as homework, um, that we might be able to use the new online resource, like or new to us online resources <laughs> Uh, to carry on their training when we get back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So learning lots of things that I think will be helpful. Yeah. It's a, it's a big learning curve. Um, you and I were chatting about that a little bit, but um, 
it's, it's nice that people are being patient because everybody's scrambling to learn. Um, I mean, I don't think I'll talk for myself. I'm certainly not a tech whiz. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get my laptop at home. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so what about a tip for staying positive and healthy during this time? Yeah. Um, so I think the, the main issue that I've seen for people is lack of routine, right? Um, sure, that's not news to anyone really, but um, I found it very helpful. I was scrolling through Facebook and someone who was now homeschooling their child had posted um, their schedule for the day with their kid. And it was so, it was so basic, but it was so awesome. And it was like, 9 a.m. reading, 10 a.m. science, 11 a.m. was like walk. And then they had lunch and then they did like math and trampoline and then BMX. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> but actually the way that it, the way they broke it down, I mean, there was only six or seven things on the list, but it was the main hours of like nine to three or 4 p.m. Um, and they were broken down into manageable bite-sized pieces. And I was like, oh, wow, I could, I was getting up on time and everything, but I found that that structure was going to be really helpful. Yeah. Um, and I've been setting that up or not setting up. I've been telling people about that since then. And I think that that's actually working a little bit. And so if it's, whether it's, hey, we have a workout at 7 a.m. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's actually a, a yin class with Dawn at 8 a.m. So for people who we have a lot of retirees as well, they can exercise at seven, they can stretch at eight, then they have like lunch, or sorry, lunch, breakfast, like coffee, read the paper, whatever, then set yourself like two hours for some kind of a task. And for me, that's project. good. Yeah. yeah, emails or like administrative stuff or a project outside, and then you have your lunch break, and then you have the other part of your day that you miss. So whether yeah. it's the project you didn't do or the paperwork you didn't do or um but breaking it down sort of into one and two hour chunks I found really helpful mm -hmm. yeah yeah especially yeah just on a on a day-to-day -day basis and then trying to keep that structure for the five days a week at least yeah it's interesting because I found for myself and my family we kind of went from that like panic sort of fear rejuggled to like holiday mode <laughs> snacking mode <laughs> so and and I find myself too really just craving that routine of of and, and purpose you know we all need purpose so totally yeah I think we also were noticing that it, it initially I was like oh I can get into this this is like uh I can't go to work and I also can't get in trouble for not going to work but obviously I mean you know as well like we're still working mm -hmm. uh you not working mm -hmm. um but it feels like it's always saturday but you have to work a little but like you're not off but you are on holiday so it's like this weird middle ground where yeah. you're like trying to do your job but there's stuff that's like coming up whether it's like yeah. kids interrupting or like projects you want to do or sunny day <laughs> it's a it's a weird thing though it's a weird feeling you can't quite put your finger on it yeah so yeah think, has been been the big thing and um the other thing that I've always done is like I set monthly goals but I find setting a weekly goal I know there's a lot of aggressive doers and let's I'm, to be honest I'm an aggressive doer <laughs> <laughs> everybody can can do that right and a lot of people need the permission they need to be given permission to relax and they don't need to be like rebuilding their house and their garden and renewing and like learning a new language right now and all this and for some people that keeps them busy and occupied that's great but for the people who that doesn't work for like their routines might be way less aggressive that way like it do the thing that you like do the thing maybe that challenges you a little bit do something you like again keep it like pretty chill and mm -hmm. like low stress low anxiety uh -huh. um and maybe setting like one a manageable goal per week where it's just like hey cook a new recipe once a week mm -hmm. but don't pick one for every category just pick one what <laughs> moderation that's a good word <laughs> yeah. <Basically. laughs> yeah. yeah 
And you have, so we all know it's so important to move. It's an industry where we're all, we're passionate about movement in general mm -hmm. and um, staying healthy involves movement. So is there, is there like a goodie, something, something that you, your go-to that you can impart on us for mind, body, or soul um, that maybe we can work on in practice? Yeah, um, I think, so I, we obviously had chatted about this and I was thinking about um, like a stretch that I like or an exercise that I like. Um, I think that the most important thing is that you have to find something that you like to do. At the end of the day, it has to be a thing that you enjoy. Um, and that's one of the main things that I try to like impart, I guess, through our business is that movement should be joyful. Mm -hmm. And so for me personally, it's community based. And so I know that I, you know, I own a gym, but I still don't necessarily want to exercise on my own right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, I like to have that camaraderie and I, I don't think it as think of it as a uh, punishment exercising. I think of it as a, like a really good time. I feel good. I feel strong, but I also get to hang out with my friends. And so for me having like workouts where we're streaming them with my friends has been really helpful. Yeah. And so I, so I, would say just find the thing that you really enjoy and for right now whether that's like going on a walk maybe by yourself right um or coordinating a walk with your friend where you're maybe chatting on the phone while you guys are walking but maybe not together <laughs> I don't know, yeah. to like yeah. hang together yeah maybe it's biking maybe your exercise is gardening maybe your exercise is trampolining with your kid or mm -hmm. playing basketball with your kid one of our coaches was is super into that and that makes her happy right so any movement that makes you feel more positive um i don't think it has to be one exercise yeah bring some joy in i love yeah. it the thing that you like and then do that thing and be unapologetic about it yeah yeah self-care i love yeah. it so um i have a couple questions about your online classes so do people need anything for your online classes to nope. sign in and we'll figure it out like that kind of thing so um we're basically running body weight workouts we if you have gear that's great what we did is we for our members that we had when their gym closed on march 16th we had a gear loan program so we said to them hey we're gonna do some home workout somehow we don't know what it's gonna look like yet if you guys want to borrow gear great so we actually uh there was two days where we had people coming in one at a time taking the things that they wanted, signing them out, and they're keeping them for the duration of our closure. So they have some equipment, but not everybody does, right? Um, some people were just late to the party. And so everything that we do in our workouts can be body weight entirely. Um, soup cans are a surprisingly great uh, replacement for little dumbbells. Also, yeah. bottles of wine, we're seeing a lot of. <laughs> a lot of bottles of wine. <laughs> Bicycles with bottles of wine. Yeah. Uh, the other one is like, uh, oh man, the best one was like a box set of Game of Thrones DVDs. That was what <laughs> I That would be big, yeah. <laughs> and literally like a bag of books, but you don't need that stuff. So we're offering yeah. workouts. Okay. Um, you can do them by reserving at www.wildandunited.com. Um, and basically we have our regular membership rates, which we have not changed. Um, we also though have a pay what you can membership option. So we always have a try a first class for free thing that still stands. You can get through our website. Um, and if it's the case after that, where you or someone in your family has been laid off and like financially, it's just not viable to be, even though everyone wants to support each other's businesses locally, obviously not everybody's in the position to do that right now. And that's totally fair. And we don't want to punish anybody for that, of course. And we don't want to exclude anybody for that. So, um, so we decided to have a pay what you can membership. So we've had people paying anywhere from 50 to $75, but um, in one or two cases, they're less than that. And, um, and that's fine. They still get to come to class and um, it's attainable for them. Right. So that's yeah. Great. But if, if the reservation uh, part is confusing because not everybody's tech savvy, um, just getting in touch with us is uh, info at wildandunited.com and then we can uh, set everybody up. Okay, yeah. that's great. Thank you. And are you doing all kinds of payments right now or, or e-transfers? Everything is done online. So we can do um, Visa, MasterCard, e-transfers. Okay. 
I feel like those are the things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much for taking this time on a really beautiful day to come chat with us. No worries. Yeah, and it was great to meet you because this is actually the first time, I didn't say that originally, but this is actually the first time you and I have met. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate being able to connect. I'm super jazzed that uh, you got in touch. So thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. So we'll take care and be well, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, see you soon.